To get rid of those pesky ads, request stories, listen to unlisted and bonus episodes, and to chat with the gang, support us by clicking the description link. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. How's everyone doing out there? Everyone seems kind of lazy today. Um, I'm, I'm just poured myself another cup of coffee. I've got a Diet Coke over here. I'm about to be ready. So, Jen... We had to zoom in a little bit because things like your face got a lot smaller. You want to tell us about that? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I, I haven't seen like a whole lot of difference. Like personally, I've noticed like some changes, but the week one was good. Um, the food that's on the meal plan is all stuff that I like. And, it's you know, I've exercised, got my gallon of water in every day. So things are going nice. good. Yeah, so. yeah, nice. Drinking a lot of water is hard. It is. The worst part about this program is like not even the program. It's the fact that having to drink all the water, like I'm in the bathroom so much. So I apologize if I have to get up. Like I will only get up. I will only get up if I am about to explode. But that happens so frequently now that I can't make any promises of how. You talking about poo poo or pee pee? No, peeing because she's drinking a lot of water. I I was going to make that was just everyone was wondering. So I just I don't think anyone was wondering. Let me do the uh, formalities here, guys, and get us started. So welcome to the Talk Murder to Me podcast. My name is John. I'm sitting here with Jen and Nicole. Welcome to the live stream. If you're here on YouTube, we do this every Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I release episodes every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, unless there's only two episodes, and it'd be like Monday and Thursday. I release around 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Just search Talk Murder Me podcast on any platform app. The, all these description links are in the description below. You can also check out our sister podcast, Among the Dirt and Trees, who uh, our good friend Brianna Colorado. She does true crime that occurs out in nature, so stories you've never heard before, and she is killing it. It is my favorite podcast, and a lot of other people are saying the same thing, that they absolutely love that podcast, so check that out. Also, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Nicole and I do what we call true crime headlines. We're keeping up with the the goings-on in true crime, who killed who, who you know cheated on who, yada, 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 celebrity stuff, anything that makes the true crime headlines will cover. So be sure to subscribe to this channel right now. Also, Nicole is doing trivia on today's episode and anyone can win, even if you are not a supporter. If you like this, we're also doing another story. This is one of the craziest stories I've ever heard right after this. And we're doing that for our supporters or talk is primo. So go to patreon.com slash talk murder. If you want to participate, it's more of interactive we actually get on live chat and we interact with you guys plus it's a a crazy story which i'll tell you about here in a little bit if you can't pay don't worry inflation sucks i know don't uh pay if you really can't those episodes will be out like i said during the week next week and i'll put the photos on talkmer.com so all right so our newest (laughs) members Summer, and I I know Summer has already been on the uh, headlines this week joining us. Thank you, Summer, for joining us at Taco Supremo. And Barbara, thank you for joining. We appreciate it. Summer and Barbara. And so here's where we're at for surprise shots. Let's see. I needed to know if Lauren had a specific request. Lauren, you on today? Because you're you're coming up close on my list. No, I don't see her on. Christy, who is next on my list, had a very specific request request and they did not have it at the store so i need to make another attempt to find it That's amazon the vegemite right no oh that was lauren's request was the vegemite mm-hmm. i forgot to see if i could find it i know that they don't have that in the grocery store but i do need to go look that up uh that means we are going to tackle ashley today and her shot and shram and her shot Sweet. So Sweet. I don't see Ashley um, on the live chat today. So unfortunately, it looks like she she might miss it live. But oh, catch we it. are doing a special request, and I think we will all enjoy it. It's called it's called the Flame and Beaver. Oh, Jesus! Because Ashley's from Canada, and also beavers. Remember the Angry Beavers, the show, the Angry Beavers? Yeah, I do. Vaguely, I remember the Otter Show more. Oh, PB and J Otter. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Surprise shots. Surprise shots. We don't know what they are because they're a surprise. I forgot you can't drink. I can I can drink on today. I can I can in moderation. On, yeah. All right, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that was delightful. What was that aftertaste? Fireball. And what else? Apple. Angry Orchard. Oh, well, yeah. it, she had a request of a different Ooh. hard apple cider, uh-huh. hard cider, but mm. we did not have that specific brand here. Maybe that's a Canada thing. 
I think so. But that was so good. I mean, that was delicious. I'd rather take a plain fireball, to be honest. Well, that's not what she requested. So, <sighs> tough nuggies. Sex, drugs, and sledgehammers, man. What can go wrong with that? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. There's a great story. Lovely, lovely story. We're starting tonight right here. 8250 Sycamore Drive. Okay, please go there, Google. So, where is this at, Jen? Florida. Florida. Nothing ever bad happens in Florida. No. At all. So here's where we're going to tonight. This house right here. Doing this like never fails to excite me. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> Love it. So can you describe this abode? Well, it looks like it's like a one lane highway on, on the, it's sitting on. If you go back. Yeah, it does. Isn't yeah. it weird? Yeah, oh, that's kind of weird. it's separated. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, that um, is kind of weird. I mean, it, it's a lot of land on, on each property in their ranch style homes. Yeah. So you see here. Oh, there's a lake there or pond yeah. or whatever. It's, yeah, it's like a highway that makes a big U-turn. <laughs> Maybe it's not a highway. It just that's just kind it, of the vibe that I get. It almost no, looks it like does. seventeen when you're yeah. like driving. Yeah, yeah, I mean it, it actually branches out and this is yeah. technically a highway. Okay. Right? Yeah, Florida is weird like that, at least the parts that I've been to. Yeah. What, and by weird, do you mean like no, zombies just, and and uh, lobster killers? No, I'm talking about like the like the infrastructure, like the highways and stuff. And oh, he's got a sunroom. That's or a, probably whatever. a pool, an indoor pool. Well, I know this person has a jacuzzi, or maybe the new person that bought the house took it out because it was full of semen and blood. Ew! No! <laughs> no! 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 <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, all right, so let's. Get... <laughs> oh fuck! You guys hate me. <laughs> All right, that's where we're going to tonight. Nothing ever bad happens in Florida, so I guess we can just move to the next one. Um, so Shram's throwing out some trivia even while we're chatting. Uh, and so trivia, name at least two cartoon characters John claims are hot. I didn't even know the answer, but we, Basically we got any, it. Natasha got one of them. <laughs> any female cartoon character, just name one, and it's probably going to be correct. Tina. <laughs> Uh, it was Leela and Nala were the correct answers. Oh, Nala is fucking yeah. hot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know she's... In a, an animal kind of way. I know she's like a cub. That's okay. No, like that's a thing. <laughs> I usually don't rob the, rob the cub cradles. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't rob the lion pride. No, that's a thing though. Like people will say that like Simba is hot. I can see that. In... Yeah, I don't know. I think it's more that knowledge just sounds hot. Maybe. Like, anyway, oh. sorry, didn't mean to distract us. Simba, get inside of me. Or no. whatever she said. I'm pretty sure right. that's no. not a line from the movie. <laughs> but, you know, moving on. Tonight we're going to Newport Ritchie in Florida. This is most known for its beautiful, serene landscape, its availability of cocaine and, and prostitutes, and a lot more. It's in Pasco County, Florida, and we're going to the home of this gentleman right here, if you want to describe him for our podcast listeners. This is the home that I just showed you. This is the guy's home that I just showed you. Can you describe him, somebody? Um, He is, I would say... 50s? 50s? Yeah, middle part. Um, Longer, like not long hair, but like it's a flow. What it's kind of flow? This is a goatee. Goatee. This is a mugshot photo, correct? Uh, uh, it looks like one. Yeah. Or or possibly a registered sex offender po photo. Or a passport photo. You think so? You think he looks like a sex offender? Potentially. Um, And he's, he's can hefty. Can you judge that? Like, can we just look at someone and be like... I'm, no, I'm saying the type of photo. Oh. Uh, like, like well, it could be a mugshot. It could be... Like, he's he looks like he's in trouble. Like, oh. he's not enjoying himself. This is not... This is not a good this time. This is not a selfie <laughs> that he's taking to post on his Insta. <laughs> oh, my God. Just say. We should take selfies like that look like mugshots. <laughs> so, tonight, we're going to May 16th, 2000. 2010, Newport, Ritchie, Florida, 8250 Sycamore Drive, Pasco County, Florida, the home of Dennis J. Abrahamson, hmm. a.k.a. Scooter. A scooter. Right. I haven't heard that nickname in a long time. It reminds me of the Muppet. And it also reminds me of Skeeter from Doug. Skeeter. So what do you think this guy does as an occupation? Just just throw some things out there. Um, Let's see if you can guess it. Just a foreman. He's in construction. <laughs> Those are pretty good guesses. Hang on, which lie. also means he's in the mob. Uh, he's, right, that's a good guess. He's he's not in the mob though. He actually is a full time tattoo shop owner. This is his shop embellish embellish embellishing tattoos and piercings. 
that's his shop right there. And not only that, he owns a tow truck business, which is actually illegitimate. So this is 2010, as I said. His tow trucking business, which I think you could see in the photo of the house out front, it's a big black truck, but he was really well known to police for this tow truck business because he would uh, take cars that weren't illegally parked or something else and he would kind of hold them for ransom mm. and a lot of the cars would be like let's say you you were parking at uh your you know a, a well-known drug dealer's house and you double parked or something or whatever he'll tow your car and for even though it wasn't double parked or whatever it was correctly parked and then he'd be like oh are you going to call the police and tell them you were parked at this drug dealer's car or are you just going to pay me two hundred dollars type of thing you know what i'm saying shady shit yeah but a lot of people turned him in for that so he was extremely well known to the police so when they get this call that i'm about to tell you about this down one call at his house they knew exactly whose house it was and it was dennis j abrahamson's house aka scooters Mm. all right he also dealt in drugs and he even dabbled in running a small prostitution ring So as I said before, we're starting May 16th, 2010. One of his cousins actually show up at his house and he's knocking on the door. Scooter doesn't come to the door. This this uh, cousin's getting kind of worried because the night before Dennis had a uh, sex party at his home and with hired prostitutes. OK, and swingers and anyone who wanted to participate in this mass sex party. It's not so much that the cousin was worried. It was more of that, oh, he must be passed out or whatever. Or, you know, maybe he overdosed because there was a lot of cocaine in that house. So he enters the house and what he sees is nothing less than a a massacre. And I, I do not use that word lightly with this story. So I'm going to show you a couple pictures here. This is obviously the home, the front door. So the cousin enters the front door. It is unlocked and he's done that before. And then he sees what looks at first to be multiple people's blood. It is splattered all over every piece of furniture oh damn and every wall in the house the living room was the murder scene and the blood traversed every angle and hit every wall including the the high ceiling and the high ceiling fan they found blood there it was all over the place all over the place and i'm showing you some photos right now if you want to try to explain what you're seeing here so you see all this blood and these are little blood droplets see them here but not just that, like, look at that puddle next to the fireplace. That's a huge puddle of blood. Oh, it's like that band. I was puddle just thinking blood. that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a puddle of mud. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean. I, I prefer Nickelback, but. Oh, oh no. Look at that Don't photograph. Don't do it, Seth. <laughs> I know someone whose favorite band is Nickelback. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Oh, God. They just, they don't leave your head. They don't, like, the once you start singing the song, it gets stuck in your fucking head. Yeah. All right, can you describe this uh, photo, what you're seeing here? Can you, hey, Nicole, can you look at this photograph? Stop it. I <laughs> I'm glad he said it because I was going to say it and I was like, maybe I shouldn't say this, but he just doesn't care. All right. That's a huge pull of blood. But remember that pull of blood because that's not where the body was at any point during the murder. Wait, not even remotely near? Not even remotely. So the body is actually a couple feet behind this photo you're looking at now. It has remained in the same place the entire time. And it was actually, let me uh, go to the next photo here. So here's some more blood scenes. You see that it's just everywhere in, in, in this. There's cocaine. Oh, a condom. A condom, which, you know, I don't even know why they make those anymore. More blood here. So I'm just showing you some of the photographs here of the evidence here. This is the crime scene photo right here. What does this look like to you? This a bed. Is, this is where the a massage bo- table. This is a massage table. You see the, the, uh, the headboard up here 
The decedent. Oh, it's stained with blood. The decedent, and there was only one, was laying on this massage table that you're seeing right now. And I'll put these photos on talkmore.com. But this is the head of the massage massage table up here. And hold on. You see, look at all this blood right here. Oh, so it's already red, but. I mean, look at all that blood. That is a lot of blood. Yeah. What do you think happened here, Nicole? Can you look at this photograph? I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, I mean, it looks like someone was murdered while they were being massaged face down on the table. All right. Does anyone know the story? And if you do, don't spoil it for these two girls because they don't know the story. But I would like to find out if someone knows about it. There was so much blood that it honestly looked like multiple people, but there was only one body in the house. And that was the cousin, his cousin. You remember this guy's cousin? It's his house, but the cousin shows up and he's like, I know there was a sex party, a wild sex party, cocaine, prostitutes all over the place. Like, let me go in. And then he sees all this blood splatter. And then he sees his cousin still laying there, Scooter, on the massage table. Oh, Scooter be dead? Scooter be dead. Scooter is laying on the massage table. His head is face down. Like you do, you put it in that the headrest of the massage table is holding his face. And what we'll later find out is that he was sleeping because, you know, when you get a massage and especially when you've been doing a lot of cocaine, you tend to fall asleep later in the night. You know, you would think that if you were having cocaine, though, you would not. It's like keeps you up. So crazy. um, The my uh, mother knows somebody who I guess if you have very um, uh, like blood pressure and heart problems, you'd be really careful about getting massages. So um, someone my mom knows got a massage. And when they were finished, um, like he, you know, he like left him to go, you know, put his clothes back on and he died from like, I guess there was like a blood pressure issue that he had or whatever. And he like had a stroke heart. I don't remember exactly what it was. Aneurysm. Um, and, and the period between the time that the masseuse left and came back. Yeah. Well, they noticed like he hadn't come out of the room. They like, wait, it was like a half an hour and they're like, all right, it's, it's everything okay and knocked and he like never got up maybe there's some blood or some oxygen an oxygen bubbles or something trapped in that spot and then when she released it maybe i don't know i I think it was a blood pressure issue all right so laying face down in the massage chair was the victim dennis j abramson in a hamper next to the body in a hamper was this what is this nicole a baseball bat incorrect it is a softball bat oh okay god metal (laughs) aluminum yeah for slow pitch softball (sighs) It is also a sledgehammer in the bottom of it, if you guys can see. This is a hamper that has a softball bat lying across the top of it. Down below, there's multiple items, which you can't really see in this photo, but there is a sledgehammer. There is a... It could be a baseball bat. I was just being a dick. There is two knives, and there is the decedent cell phone. Now, there's also a pool of blood in this. So, between all of these pools of blood, you can tell that this was... This was something else. The detectives get there after the 911 call comes in, and the cousin is like... Oh my God, get here quick. You know, scooters down. I I don't, you couldn't even tell that his head was even attached to his body anymore. Apparently he had been asleep, most likely getting a massage and he fell asleep in the massage on the massage table with his head facing down. And either someone in the house, the massage therapist does this, which, you know, I would imagine it would be a female, which detectives are like, there's no way they could do this because this guy, the victim, has a three-inch hole, a three-inch hole, the radius three-inch, in the back of his head. So I know it's a sledgehammer, but that's a pretty hard downward swing. Mm. So here's the thing. I told you about Scooter's extracurricular activities, his 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 side hustles. Mm. He has a lot of enemies. He is towing cars from drug dealers' houses. He is involved in prostitution rings. He is involved in drug running. He is a wanted man by a lot of other criminals. Mm. He himself is a criminal. There's a lot of people that want to take a sledgehammer to the back of Scooter's head. Mm -hmm. All right. And the detective looking at the scene and all the blood everywhere and the head being completely smashed in with a three inch hole, a radius of three inch in the back of his skull. There's no way a woman could have did this. And who was there? He didn't hire male prostitutes. They were female and there were males there 
at the time. Right. But so the alternative theory here is that maybe maybe he was getting a massage and we know he keeps his door unlocked. So one of those enemies came in after he fell asleep and decided to go to town. What kind of massage do you think he was getting? Do you think it was a happy ending massage? Probably knowing this dude. It was definitely an ending massage. <laughs> 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 there were six thousand dollars stolen from his safe the safe was open the detectives know that there was money gone they eventually find out it's six thousand dollars his credit cards were gone and also a, an expensive video camera that he had gone this could be a robbery more disturbing than the amount of blood and the the skull of the victim was the hundred plus stab wounds in the back of That's the victim a yeah a hundred plus not only were there over a hundred stab wounds but they were all post-mortem. Oh. Who would do who would be this depraved to kill someone with a sledgehammer and then knowing he's dead, stab him over a hundred times? Someone who either didn't think that they would figure out it was post-mortem or someone who had a very personal grievance with him. Maybe an ex-lover. Also, who would leave the murder weapons right there, along with all the DNA and everything, right there next to the body in a hamper? Crazy. Hmm. All right. Any so questions? was there DNA or fingerprints? of the killer um well at first and here's one here's the one of the knives found here and i'll show you this again later but this is the night one of the knives that the kitchen knife yes yeah, a small knife. Ki oh kitchen knife but over a hundred times wow that's a lot martin said it might have been a setup ah a setup eh mm. has anyone heard this story before so far no if they have they haven't come forward all right so they look in the hamper and the decedent cell phone is in there so we know this was a sex party. That's what his cousin has told us. Let's just go through the cell phone and see his contacts because he got to call someone to book the, you know, the sex workers to come over here. The last number registered that texted him was from a Jason Andrews. So they're like, all right, that's a good lead. They track down this Jason Andrews and he's two hours away. Okay. He's also locked up. He's been locked up for shoplifting him and a blonde female. Like they were just picked up after they, the yeah, party? Yeah, just after the party, yeah. Wow. So he's locked up. So they're like, well, the blonde female is not locked up. So let's go visit her. Was she at said party? Were both of them at the party? You can tell me. Hold on. So they go and visit this blonde female. Now, this this sex party and murder, brutal ass murder, happened in Florida in Newport Ritchie. They go visit this blonde female, Amanda Logue, in Georgia. Okay. She's in Leesville, Georgia, which is a pretty far skip and hop away. Yeah. Was she on the run? They show up at her house. And it was a Sunday when the, the detectives show up. Now, they only show up because in this guy's phone, Jason Andrews' phone, was the number of this Amanda Logue. So they're like, OK, well, this girl's in Georgia. So anyway, let's go visit her. They get there on a Sunday. She just walks in from church. Questionable whether she was at said party. They find out that she is a mother of a young daughter and a wife. Okay. Who has just gotten back from church. This is her right here. Amanda Logue. Can you describe her? Um, She looks pretty young. I'd say 30s. Flirt, early, early 40s. 30s? Early 30s? I don't know. Maybe the mid 30s. She's definitely a target. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, target. yeah. Definitely target. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Shopping. Oh, God. I love target. Mm. It's so much cleaner than Walmart. Organized. Yep. Yeah. Fine. Here's another photo of her right here. So she doesn't look like she's involved in a sledgehammer murder. I mean, she's at a thrift shop. And this was hundreds of miles away and only a few days ago you think she's involved in this hey you never know was she at the party <laughs> what do you think she's a housewife and uh, you did not answer my question was she at the party <sighs> We don't know. Maybe she had a different life. You got to remember that this is the most brutal murder this county has ever seen. The most brutal murder. The detective, which was a, a male, and the other detectives were male, they automatically discounted that a woman could have done this. They go visit Amanda Logue. She's not only coming back from church with a, a young daughter and her married husband, who is also a retired police officer. Ooh. Hmm. She starts crying when they show up. Like, what are you... <laughs> 
You come to my well, home? Well, what was she doing with another guy there, while he was shoplifting? These detectives are accusing her of murder. And she is bawling, crying, like, why are you doing this? You you know, who who are you? They look into her background. So they, they leave. Mm-hmm. Okay, miss, you know, we may contact you again. They leave. They look into her background. All right. She hasn't had the best life growing up. She got pregnant when she was in high school. And she is from Georgia. Small town in Georgia, Leesville, Georgia. She is pregnant in high High school has to drop out. So she's now a high school dropout. The only source of family or comfort that she has in this small town is her mother. The mother is helping her take care of this young daughter. And unfortunately, when she was 19, her mother dies. So now, now what do you have? You have a high school dropout trying to raise a young daughter in a very small town in Georgia with no work and no help. Luckily, she meets this man. He's an older man. He's a retired police officer. And at first, he was taking care of her out of pity because she is struggling and her baby's not eating. So he is taking care of her, but eventually they both fall in love. Now, it's not really what she wanted in life because she, and and this is someone else's words, not mine, she is a gorgeous blonde female with a nice figure. She's 19 and she's married to someone who is 50 years old or more. I didn't, I don't know exact age, but he's a retired police officer. Mm -hmm. He's an older gentleman. All right. This is not really the life she wanted, but this is the life she needed. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. So it's not really what she wanted, but she's had a pretty tough life growing up. She got pregnant, her mom dies, and then she finally gets the stroke of luck with this man, even though it's not really what she wanted. And then another tragedy hits, like they always do in in Amanda Logue's life. The husband was involved in a really bad car wreck, and he suffered a head injury and brain damage. So this is not good, because this means medical bills. And the more medical bills, the less food I can put in my young daughter's mouth. So she takes it upon herself to make some money. Now, she's always wanted to be a model growing up. (laughs) Do do you guys know where this is going? (laughs) Sort of. She has always wanted to be a model growing up. And I think, honestly, if she had OnlyFans back in the in the day, I don't think we would be doing this. Because, I mean, I'm telling you, those girls make a lot of money on OnlyFans. Like a million dollars a month. I'm serious. Look it up. She always wanted to be a model. And... Fast forward five years from when she snapped that first photo of herself, you know, looking like, okay, I can do this. I'm confident enough to do this. I'm confident enough. This is her right here. One of the first ones. Yeah. Okay. I can do this. You know, maybe, maybe I'll get an Instagram page and Twitter and and people will follow me and I'll get promotions. Five years go by and this is her at five years. Okay. And mind you, she still has a husband. This is her now. Complete change. Is it not? Yeah. Complete change. Change. And now Amanda Logue, a.k.a. Sunny Day, D-A-E, mm-hmm. is not just the little town Georgia housewife who's trying to make it. She's now most known for her roles in Amateur Lesbian Lovers, Milf Next Door 11, Back Room Milf, and my favorite title, Southern Bukaki. <laughs> Which definitely makes me want to order some Japanese food. <laughs> I'd be down for that. I was going to say, I don't after you just said that word. Oh, no, but... I wasn't thinking. of. I'll take a bukkake with rice, stop, please. Stop, stop. <laughs> stop. No. No. You have crab. No. <laughs> Jen, you know what bukkake is? Sure, I do. What is bukkake? No, no I'm not I really, going to go into it on the podcast. You don't know what it is. That's okay. Let her not know what it is because once you know what that word is, you can't take it back. Yeah, I don't want to. I think it's stop it. It is a no. Beautiful, I, it, no, just move on. I'm just gonna say no because now you are literally about to ruin like a Japanese meal as an option for for us today. And <laughs> I rice. <laughs> <laughs> move on. <laughs> Ashley's like, oh, no, right. she was reply. She was replying to something oh. else. So now you have, and I'm gonna save you guys all the the twit picks of Amanda Loke, aka Sunny Day, because there's mostly females on here, but she's been in a lot of porn and she has a lot of photos of her butt nakes, right? But she is also married with a daughter. But now she transforms in, from Amanda Loke to Sunny Day and she is a part owner of a lingerie shop. She starts making thousands and thousands of dollars doing BDSM, fetish modeling, hardcore, and lesbian porn. And she was even cast in the 2009 sequel of Road Trip, Road Trip Beer Pong. 
Oh. So that's her right there. <laughs> so now, five years later, she's traveling the country, living the high life, making thousands and thousands of dollars, leaving her disabled husband and all of her burdens, including her young daughter behind, traveling state to state, doing pornography, and she is getting cast in all the biggest roles out there, Okay. Until she leaves for New York, doesn't tell her husband she's not planning on coming back. She goes to New York, leaves her daughter, her husband, all of her worries there, or what was left of her worries. She just got cast for a huge porn video role, which could win the porn award, which is known as what? Do you know what the porn award is? It's a real thing. No, I know it's a real thing. I just don't remember the name. She could actually win the Woody Award. I was going to say Stiffy. That's right. Uh, Brandon got it. Did he? Oh, yeah. (laughs) So this is the role that she was cast for here. Natural porn killers. (laughs) Oh, wow. Wow. And it was natural born killers was the Uh, um, inspiration. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Interesting. Natural porn killers, (laughs) which is. Obviously going to be the title of this episode. And you see yeah, here, there's, who, who's this guy? Jason oh. Andrews. Scooter. No, not Scooter. His name is Dennis, but the guy that he texted. Oh, that she, that was picked up shoplifting. Oh. Yeah. The guy that, yeah, that was picked up shoplifting lifting is Jason Andrews. Mm. All right. So things are coming around now for the detective. Okay. She's not some innocent, you know, housewife coming back from church and her little girdle or whatever, like she pretends to be, mm. you know? She's a hardcore porn model. <laughs> For fuck's sake, holy shit. <laughs> this is Jason Andrews. Jen, you would you would like this guy. He's a pretty good looking guy. I mean, I guess. All right, well, let me show you some dick pics. Oh, I'm, no. just <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is a better picture. What do you think he does? He's a director. Oh, he's a... Well, he's in porn, we uh, know that. <laughs> what kind of porn? <laughs> Natural porn killers. We just went over this. <laughs> does he look British to you? No. And does he look like a DJ? Yes. Po- DJ Polly D. <laughs> DJ Polly D. All right. So this is Jason Andrews, a.k.a. DJ Veritas. So That's truth, isn't it? Veritas mm-hmm. is truth. Yeah. A.k.a. DJ Veritas. Jason Andrews, bisexual, gay porn star, has been in many gay porn roles. And the reason that he does gay porn is because it pays five times more than regular vag porn. He is a Chicago DJ with a British accent. He's from Kentucky and he has a British accent. Interesting. His stage name is DJ Veritas. He is described as, quote, an obnoxious bloke with a British accent who often bragged about his military past. This is him right here. And he was not in the military i'm assuming why does he look like he's in a chamber or is it like a tanning in bed he's got some pretty ripped abs is is what is why is he green because the uv light (laughs) (laughs) he does green porn (laughs) (laughs) he is described as having quote a chiseled jaw and good looks that landed him roles in countless gay porn videos this guy's from Kansas, but yet he talks with a British I accent. Kentucky. Yeah, I thought he said Kentucky. <laughs> oh, did I? Yeah. yeah. This guy is originally from Kansas. Oh, okay. Jason Andrews is originally from Kansas, but he talks with a British accent. It's fake. He talks with a fake fucking accent. Who does that? I do. <laughs> No, but like he's doing this permanently, right? Yeah. He's trying to make people think that he is. So Amanda right. Logue meets this guy. She falls in love with this British bloke who has served in the Israeli special forces who has killed many of people. And he does gay porn. The gay porn aspect is literally the only thing that is accurate in this guy's life. He is a small town Kansas boy who joined the Marines as a legal clerk. He gets out of the Marines and then starts gay porn videos, has adopts a British accent, and then tells everyone that he's traveled all over with the Israeli special forces killing a lot of people. Hmm. I mean, he's completely fake, right? But she falls in love with this guy, or what she thinks this guy is. So now, this little Georgia peach doesn't seem so innocent. Okay, all right. So the, the detectives go back and they say, all right, do you know this guy named Jason Andrews. <laughs> for a second, I thought, you were, yeah, I thought you were waiting for like another character, and I was like, Jason Bourne? Jason Porn! <laughs> Jason Porn, I like that. 
the detectives are like, do you know this guy named Jason Andrews, a.k.a. DJ Veratis? She says, no. Okay, well, can you tell us what this is? Now, keep in mind that her husband, a retired police officer, is also in the room. Mm. So that's them together. Right. Her and Jason Andrews, a.k.a. DJ Veratis. All right. So, yeah, I do know him. What about it? Were you in Newport Ritchie with Jason? She says, no. Okay, that's cool. Can you explain this? This is her official Twitter page. Sunny Day. The real Sunny Day, May 16th. When was his murder? May 16th is when the body was found. Mm. Was it not? Mm -hmm. May 16th, 2010. Taking it easy today with here Veratis lying around eating popcorn and watching movies. So she was with him during that day. And then not only that, but this is a few days before taking a ride to Newport Ritchie with Hart Veratis to get our fuck on for a shoot. Hmm. Does her husband know that she was doing porn? <laughs> fuck, I don't know. I would assume not. I don't think so. How did? How would he not know, though? Maybe he doesn't watch porn. I don't know. Fuck. But like, no, really? I don't know. I mean, you don't know that I do porn, so I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no one's even mentioning me on live chat. <laughs> They did earlier. What they Fram say? said John is so cool. No, John thinks he's so cool. And Martin said that you are so cool. Cool. Cool, man. <laughs> 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 All right. I know I'm I'm not cool. I'm a dork. I know. You don't have to make fun of me. All right. We're all dorks here. I like your new shoes. Don't look at this. Air shoes. Force Ones. So now she's I mean, her young daughter's at the house too. So now the detectives are like were you hired as a prostitute for a sex party at Dennis Abraham's house? Can you imagine the husband, if he didn't know this, is like, what the fuck? Yeah, legit. She says, no, get the fuck out of here. Okay, well, what's this? <laughs> Number one, Tampa's finest sunny day specials, 21. Mm. Hey, guys, I'm the perfect combination of sultry vixen and your girl next door. Give me a try. Don't have any more rainy days. Sunny days lie ahead. Give me a fucking bangs. This is a, a prostitute uh, ad. Like on Backpage. Backpage.com. I my, don't know what that is. No, me but. No, it's my like search engine. I'm just kidding. It's like Craigslist. Well, this is, I don't know, Craigslist or whatever. So let's go back to that night. So this is the night before. This is the 15th and it's a weekend. And Amanda Logue is at a strip club. Her and Jason Andrews, a.k.a. DJ Veratis, they're at a strip club. And then Dennis Abrahamson, the victim, starts texting her and is trying to set up a date for a sex party that he's throwing. with Hot tub and everything. And there's a lot of people that come to the sex party. They arrest, obviously, Sunny Day when they're getting this information. So this is what she says. I decided to do the prostitute thing and make some money. Jason did come to the house because, the, and that's the normal procedure with a prostitute going to a sex party. The pimp or boyfriend or whoever will kind of hide out in the back of the SUV just in case. You never know if something happens, they hear screaming or whatever. Then she says that she was in there giving him a massage while he was on the massage table. And then Jason comes into the house in a violent rage of jealousy with a sledgehammer. And that's what happened. And that's not her fault. So she's fine, right? I mean, she couldn't control this guy, right? Right. Right. Okay, Jen. <laughs> All right, somebody help me read this. I'll be Jason Andrews. Okay, all right. So let's say that did happen, Sunny Day. We also noticed you threw your BlackBerry SIM card away. Do you know how Blackberries work? The phone? Mm -hmm. Well, Blackberries aren't around anymore, or they're not what they used to be. But the BlackBerry phone, and I know this because I like, read a book about this for some stupid reason. The BlackBerry phone, they do use SIM cards, yeah, like every other phone. But all the messages are stored on an encrypted server, unlike any other phone you have. Those messages are stored in the SIM card data or even at the uh, you know Verizon vault or whatever. But a BlackBerry phone, most people would think at the time that if you take the SIM card out, since it's encrypted, Encrypted, you know, no one can see what uh, the information is because it's all on the SIM card. Mm -hmm. They did throw their SIM cards away in the BlackBerry phones. Both of them had a BlackBerry phone. However, that those messages are in that encrypted vault, which police can't access. Hmm. So now she's at the party. She is at this sex party having sex with a lot of people, including him in the hot tub. Then everyone starts to leave. She's giving him, him a massage. And during this whole time, they have her text messages to Jason Andrews, a.k.a. DJ Veratis, in the SUV. So, I'll be Jason, someone else be whoever. Who wants to play... 
sunny day. This is the text messages. All right, here we go. They are fucked up. Doubt they going to. But you gotta sound like a, you know, like you gotta kill somebody. They are fucked up. Doubt they going to. And him? Drunk or, or coked up? Not sure yet. Drunk, I know. Gotcha. I'll try to get comfy. Maybe be here a bit. Yep. Christ. I took another half so I can be patient. Don't worry, there's another bar. I think she's talking I think he's talking about Zanny bars. That's okay. Drink we can get more, baby. I've got some vinyl gloves. I'm so glad you're really committed to this take. Keep eyes for a knife, etc. for me. You badass. Sunrise comes quick around here. They're fixing to leave, and if nothing, lie down in back and cover up. I'm not giving you I'm not I, giving up. up. I'm not giving up. I know, babe. I've got your back. I'm just excited. They're packing up. I'm fucking excited to fuck up somebody. God damn it. I want to fuck after we kill him. Hmm. All right. So at this point, let me just preface this. They are planning the murder via their text messages right now. Okay. So when she says they are packing up, she's talking about everyone else at the party. Everyone else is about to leave. They packing up to leave. All the other couples and your know, workers or whatever. Everyone's packing up to leave. And she's going to stay massaging this, this guy, right? Depending how I'm able to make entry, I will bring the bottle to. Oops, it's empty. Yay, sweating on a stakeout. I'm going to go get it when they leave. Perfect. But only if it doesn't arouse suspicion. I love you too. They're leaving in five. Okay. Getting ready to walk out the door. I'm going to turn phone on in men. Okay, go gonna make my way out of truck soon okay i don't see knives he's got coke and two roxies just get him on his face either bash or tell him to get in and where to go i'm gonna i'm going to start a massage in a minute you will hear have you seen the contents of the safe no okay front door or back front not yet though just peeping or just prepping i'll wait for your call from here okay i'm horny i'm getting to play a music be quiet when come in i'm sorry not ready fix on table. I got all the time in the world. You just get him relaxed and face down. When I come in, what direction? Straight. Wicked. I'll just be waiting. Really, take your time. Okay, starting massage. I got a bottle liqueur to hit with you. We'll hear when to come in or sneak in now and stand in the house. Okay. Come in. The front door is locked. I'm on the back porch. I opened the front door. Shit. I... Oh my God, I feel like I'm never going to leave this bloody loo. You okay? All right, <laughs> that was kind of hard to read. I forgot he was British. All right, so what happened here? You just, you read it. Tell so me what happened. So he is the one who actually does the bashing, but she does the stabbing. Here's where it gets crazy. All right, there's an audio tape that Jason made on his phone for some reason outlining the whole crime. He says the following. Quote, I struck the back of Mr. Abrahamson very hard. I could literally feel the crushing of the back of his skull, end quote. So here's what happened. He goes in after those texts we just read, and he's standing there by sunny day, naked, on top of Dennis Abrahamson, face down, sleeping on the massage table. Jason Andrews walks in, a.k.a. DJ Veratis, and he's staying right by the table, and he is just watching and waiting, building up courage. Courage. Now, the reason that he actually went through with this, because they could have just went and stole his stuff in the safe and then just left. He would say later, the reason he actually went through with this murder is because he didn't want Sunny Day to think he's a pussy. Because he doesn't develop this whole thing where he's like this Israeli killer and, mm. you know, British special forces and all kinds of stuff. You can't just not go through with it. You can't just be like, okay, new plan. Let's just rob him, you know, because that's... That doesn't turn her on. Mm -hmm. Is you guys understand? Yep. All right. So he's sitting there and eventually he, what he says, hits him in the back of the head, quote, very hard. I could feel the literal crushing of the back of his skull. He hits the victim a few more times in the back of the head, literally destroying his skull. Now, there were two knives found with blood on them. So now at this point, Dennis is dead, completely dead. You don't get hit with a sledgehammer in the back of the skull that many times, like 20 times, and live. He is dead dead so and there was two knives found with blood on them which means both sunny day and jason andrews aka dj Varadis, were stabbing him jason andrews alone stabbed this man over a hundred times after he's after he died like why would they do that like why would both of them stab this
this man a hundred times. They were on drugs too? No, they weren't on drugs. Oh. No, they were. They were just feeding everybody else drugs. No. The reason why is because go back to that chat, that text, when you said, okay, I'm really horny. I want to fuck. Or what she says. Uh, yeah. Some, something she like says, that. She uh, says, let me see. Do, do, do. I'm horny. Uh, fuck. And then she says, I can't wait to fuck or something. I don't know what she says. The reason they start stabbing him post-mortem is because she's horny and they're both stabbing him looking into each other's eyes. She's naked. She's getting all horny. And they're just like, uh, 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 yeah, baby. Uh, uh, uh. Just like a porno pounding. But instead of pounding P, it's literally taking a knife and pounding the knife into the back. Uh, 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 over and over over a hundred times Damn. and then she's really horny she leans over his body the corpse on the massage table and he fucks her right there on top of the body oh no i don't know. oh no so they got blood all over their face you know when you stab you remember the blood's everywhere right yeah the blood is all over the place the blood all in the face it just gets them all horny and there's all bloody and just like uh, 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 uh. yeah and she's already naked she just spreads open her legs right there on the corpse and he just fucks her right on the corpse uh. and then he says quote i stood there and just looked at him i listened to the sounds of the blood dripping on the floor after the murder both amanda and jason left each other and went separate ways amanda goes back to her husband and young daughter like nothing has ever happened she dresses like a stepford wife and go back to when the de detectives first visited her she was crying so mm. what do you guys think do you guys like that story i like i that was so, i don't know why would i just don't understand like i, I just don't understand Fuck, I don't know, man. They're porn stars, shit. Yeah, but that doesn't mean they have to be murderers, too. Why yeah. did so they they could have gotten away with it, but if it weren't for those meddling kids. But okay, well, the, there's okay, a so, lot. No, right? here's the here's texts the, that like they posted on freaking Twitter where yeah, they were. That was dumb. Yeah, yeah. But here's <laughs> the, but here's the thing. Okay, all right, Sonny, let's do this. Let's kill him. Just remember to take the murder weapons with you. Okay, I'll put them in this hamper, and then I'll take it after we kill the the after we kill him. She forgot. It. She forgot the fucking murder weapons with his phone and everything, you know? The police weren't going to do too much. I mean, the guy is a known criminal. Mm -hmm. If his phone wasn't there, it would have probably been at that. She leaves the whole hamper with all the murder weapons and all the fingerprints and all the phones and everything in there. Ugh. What do you guys think? So what was her sentence? Yeah. What happened to them? Well, she is in prison for 40 years, so she's got 30 years left, and then he actually felt so bad about it that he he denied a trial and he just pleaded to guilty for life. Mm. So he's in prison for life without parole. Mm. The next story is freaking nuts, man. The next story is what I really want to cover. This was just like a... Um, does the next one ha have the correlation to the mini cowboy Yeah, hat I was going to ask about that. That you put on Cthulhu back there? No. What? Oh. <laughs> I want to say before we leave that I was teamed up on this week and I got my feelings hurt pretty bad. I don't know who started it. I don't want to name names but someone's like i don't think so and so was murdered or i don't think so and so had a suicide or whatever i think it was murder so and then out of the woodwork like all of our supreme is like i also think that and like they're backing each other up and i'm like okay i was everyone's entitled to their own opinion on the case i was going to do that story this week but there's a book that i i ordered that explains the whole case and i don't want you know how i'd like want to be thorough as possible so i want to i want to make sure i read that book first but we're gonna do that next week we're gonna redo it we're gonna redo it yeah. oh okay do you know what it is i believe so okay well don't tell anybody okay so anyway that's that story you guys are going to love the next story. If you want to support us, go to patreon.com slash talk murder and you can join and watch that uh, and, you know, and be part of it. If not, no worries. Like I said, I know times are tough. Those episodes will be out next week and the pictures will be on talkmurder.com. But I just want to say that we really appreciate all of our supporters that have supported us. It really means a lot. We're kind of still at the bottom, you know, of the barrel here, but, you know, we're still trying to hustle. So anyway, that's all I got for this story. And I'm John sitting here with Jen and Nicole. And until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people.